again <laughs> thanks christopher thanks jamie cabin boy knits first on out of six dudes live on youtube today i'm number two so stuart here from the wool patch and we are up in the loft because it's got a christmasy theme this whole do to take over the holly edition as we're calling it um and i'm in the loft because my favorite part of this season is actually getting down those decorations right if i can get this if the stream works <gasps> look there's nothing else in this loft <laughs> it is literally <laughs> it is literally just the christmas decorations i'm now going to get those down in that little hole and i shall see you in 20 seconds for everything chat about christmas decorations carols and some festive makes. See you then.
Ugh. Right. <laughs> I made it in time. Right, let's put this box. Right, this is what I wanted. Let's put this down. <sighs> Woo! Right, amazing start. Ready for 45 minutes of the wool patch. What a start from Christopher and Jamie, <laughs> Kitty Claws, and that gin. I've got my, my sherry, <laughs> good old classic British sherry. Here, have a swig. Um, <clears throat> John, <laughs> John says that's the cleanest loft ever. It is. <laughs> you know what we're like here. <clears throat> um, well, we're going to kick off your festive season. Dude 2 of Tube Dude Live. What a day. Um, I think a, a, a spawn of an idea from Fibre Hustle, which has just boomed. So 45 minutes with me now. <clears throat> if you don't know me, my name is Stuart. Uh, and I run the wool patch, a yarn fabric haberdashery shop here in Long Melford, Suffolk, UK. It's a tiny little shop that sells fabric and yarn. And I've learned it on the job. I used to be a teacher for 16 years and gave up. And now I'm kind of addicted to all things knitting, all things sewing and all things crafting. So we're here to help you get into the festive spirit. Oh, and actually... <laughs> all this effort and we need a bit of Christmas feel. So I'm now gonna get you all to do the Mary Poppins finger click. Are you ready? <laughs> After three, I want you to click as if you're Mary Poppins. Three, two, one, and click. <laughs> Yay, there we are. <laughs> uh, cheesy bit of fun. Uh, so we're here to kick off your Christmas makes. Some of you make for Christmas. You've still got four weeks to go. So <laughs> uh, you've got your Christmas music on. Have you got your decorations on? Because um, we're about to do that here. What do you think of at Christmas time? Are you just hankering down? Some people don't do anything and they just stay in their pajamas for the whole, well, that festive season. Some of you may not celebrate Christmas, but you're just in that holiday season mode anyway. Well, we'll see. But I've got lots to uh, give to you over the over the coming show. Let's have a quick look at the running order to, to whet your appetite. And let's do that and do that. There we go. So I'm going to focus on the tree decorations because that's something I love at Christmas time. It's the getting them down from the loft, opening the box and seeing them packed away for a year and getting them out. Then we've got our classic guest of year. If you're new to the wool patch and you haven't seen any of my shows over the last couple of years, you won't know it, but it's a, a fun little moment where we guess the year of a knitting pattern or a sewing pattern. But because we're doing a Christmas show this time, it makes sense to have a Christmas film that we're not only going to have to guess, but guess the year of that too. Then as you saw with Cabin Boy Knits, every dude for, this show is doing a competition uh, and I've got a giveaway for you. Each dude is doing a different competition, but it's all based around the same idea. It's this like um, an anagram, uh, a word scramble. So we've got that coming up. I'm going to talk all things crochet with you, um, uh, particularly something Christmassy crochet. And then the nativity. Can you see it? <sighs> talk about that at the end. So... Um, let's just talk about what we've just seen as well. Thank you, Cabin Boy Knits. Great start. And just remind you of what is coming up too. There they are. <laughs> All the dudes. So you, um, uh, we've got needles at the ready next. Are you getting ready, boys? Is the pressure, is your heart going? Because <laughs> I'll tell you what mine is. Um, and then we've got uh, Michael, Peace for Peace Crafting. And then, uh, yes, Chip and Aaron to finish it off, Fibre Hustle uh, at 5 p.m. Obviously, they're all different times. They're uh, Eastern Standard Time. But anyway, so let's go straight into decorations. And I want to show you if this works, if this uh, technology works. Let's get it out. Here's the box, and here's one of. Oh, look at that. Good old Lynx. Did you get that for Christmas? Anyone in here in Britain? <laughs> get a good old Lynx aftershave set for Christmas. Right. Christmas decorations. Here we go. 
And I wanted to talk to you about Christmas decorations because for me, at Christmas, that is the really special thing because we have our trees, don't we, where we decorate them with all sorts of baubles. Do you have a colour scheme? Gold, red, classic. I don't tend to put too many baubles on because we then have these special decorations that we collect over the years. And I just wanted to spend five minutes showing you these because it's this process that really means a lot to me at Christmas. Um, and it's when you open the box and look at that, tree decoration. But it's this idea that when you give a, a tree decoration, which I think is a lovely thing to give, write your name on it and write the year on it. Anyone in the chat do that for gifts? Give out tree decorations. So you turn it over and you've got a wonderful piece of history there. And I can see what that says there to uh, me from some friends. And look at that, 2008. Now, what a story is that? Still there, pride of place on the tree. And it's the act of finding that in the box. So when you're, you're scrambling around, looking in your box, and you see it, and it just brings back the memories of when you got it. Now, I can tell you about this. 2008, uh, it says there, um, Martin, Suzanne, Mill and Iz. And actually, those two, Mill and Iz, I used to teach them as a teacher. <laughs> so that now brings back so many memories of when I was teaching, and when I was teaching them. Now, those girls have clearly grown up and, and moved on. But let's look at another one. I'm a massive cat fan. Any cat fans in the house? Shout if you are. <laughs> I'm sure Five Hustle, Seamus is watching. I would like to think Seamus is watching, but there we are. Look at that one. Uh, beautiful cat decoration. And uh, when I turn that over, I can see Mandy gave me that in 2017. Good old Mandy. Don't know whether you uh, um, are familiar with my channel, but Mandy is one of my old colleagues of teaching. She is an amazing knitter. She like knits all the time. She can knit wonderful cable, wonderful Aaron Ganzies, all, you name it, without even looking at her fingers. <laughs> she's knitted for me before, she's knitted for the shop before, and I've often shown uh, her knits to you. Um, so lovely to show you, uh, show you Ooh, a wrong button, <laughs> uh, to show you that. So uh, that was, uh, yeah, uh, Mandy there. And uh, now these ones are particular, um, I fond when I look at these, um, and uh, I think um, Chip and Aaron will find out why in a jiffy. Look at these. Beautiful felted, that's all felt, and what's that, do you call that? Um, blanket stitch, isn't it? Handmade. And when I turn one of them over, which one? Oh, there we go. From Dill, Seattle. Um, and it's, a, it's, every time I get these out, I get quite emotional because Dill, it was one of our knit and natter ladies at the shop. So in my shop, every morning and every afternoon, I have the same ladies that come in to knit and natter. You know them, you've got them in your shop as well, uh, or your, your local town, village, wherever you are, your local yarn shop or your local fabric shop. And Dill was Thursday morning and her son lived in Seattle. So she would often go over to Seattle to see him. Um, and this time she brought back, she knows how much I love Christmas, she brought back these decorations all the way from Seattle. <laughs> there you go. Sadly, we lost Dill a couple of years ago. So, uh, uh, cause I've been at the shop since 2016. So every time I get those out, I then put them up, think of Dill and, and give her a razor glass. Hmm. Do the same. And that's the idea with the Christmas decorations. And as I say, it makes a lovely gift. So if you give someone, you don't know what to give. I know pennies, a bit tight at the moment, cost of living, we hear all about it. Um, there may be a really simple, but sweet tree decoration. So it's not gonna be a huge present and write your name on the back and the date. And it makes fond memories. And I can't wait to do the rest. So tree decorations, lovely, lovely, lovely. There we are. So, mm -hmm. snowman. Rudolph, or should it be the other way around? Rudolph, snowman. <laughs> 
So, right, are you ready for a bit of fun? So this is the guest the year bit. So we are norm normally, I say, we do a pattern or a, uh, a sewing pattern or a, a knitted pattern, but we're doing a Christmas film. We've all got favourite Christmas films, haven't we? Put them in the chat of your favourite Christmas film. <laughs> Which one you can watch over and over and over again, doesn't matter. It's always on at Christmas time or you put the DVD on. So here we are, we're going to guess the year. So I'm going to show you it first and I'll come back to it. Love seeing everything in the chat. Gary says, uh, real tree or fake tree? <laughs> it used to be a real tree. Now it's a fake tree, year on, year out. I want to be at Canada, though, and cutting one down. <laughs> um, right, let's put that and get rid of that. Right, so guess the year. You've got a minute now to write it in the chat, whatever you think the film is. And the year it was released. So from that poster, what was the film and what was the year? Write it in the chat, go. Come on, put them in. Nineteen ninety eight. Yeah, get the year as well. Is it easy? <laughs> Okay, ready for it? <laughs> I think you all got it. And the year, many, many, many of you got it. 1993. <laughs> well done. A wonderful film. If you haven't seen it, Go for, go for it. Uh, many of you have seen a Tim Burton film, but it uh, it was I just loved it. Um, as a before I went into having my shop, the Woolpatch, I was a drama teacher, head of drama at a secondary school. Started there in two thousand, and did it for sixteen years. And I always wanted to do something different with the kids, production wise or in class. And Tim Burton's poetry was just. It was always an inspiration. If you haven't read the original Tim Burton, The Nightmare Before Christmas as a poem, go dig it out. You can look for it on, on, uh, on, on, the, on the interweb. But he's also written loads of other short poems. And I would often do, um, we would call them like a little, not, not a huge show where you've got two acts and an interval, but we would often have like a drama club where we would just put a, a short set of, of, of his poems on for about an hour uh, where the parents could come and watch. And very, very fond of them. So dig them out. One was called, uh, I remember it, Voodoo Girl <laughs> and Stain Boy. And of course it had that, 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 quirky sort of humour of uh, of Tim Burton and and something about them that were always uh, upsetting or sad yet they sometimes came through and had a nice ending some sadly not but you know it from uh, Tim Burton uh, but there you are that's a movie which leads us nicely on to music you've got to have music on at Christmas time haven't you in the background on Spotify or do you have it running through? Do you have set playlists? I had it on this afternoon and we had it on right at the beginning, didn't we? You've got to have that Christmas music in, in the background. So 
that was a bit of fun. Now we've got our actual competition where we're giving away a prize. Every dude tube is giving away a prize. Let's go into our competition. So, this competition is not a comment one, all right? <laughs> so we're gonna do a, just a brief chat first about music, and then I'm gonna tell you how to enter. Uh, so are you an Andy Williams fan? Do you have that in the background? It's the most wonderful time. <laughs> or are you all sick to death of hearing that one? Um, what about Johnny Mathis? Having that on? Or do you like to go for even more Carpenters? I love them. I've always got them on. Uh, especially some of those albums where you've got some lovely orchestral, uh, or orchestrated versions in the background too. Or are you modern? Do you like a bit of buble? <laughs> I think we all like a bit of buble, don't we? Um, or are you classics? Now, there are some times where I actually just want uh, classic FM on. Or I'll find a channel where I could just stream choral music or or just, you know, classics. Uh, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, things like that. Oh, Holy Night, classic one, where you've got wonderful key changes. Or, or, or um, Oh, Come All You Faithful. You've got to love that. What is it? The descant bit at the end when the, the choirs go up. <laughs> Any of those. Yeah, the classic. So many you've run. Oh, right. Oh, look at that. I grew up with Andy Williams and John. Yes, it's just, yeah. Oh look, oh look, the chats go so quick. I can't, <laughs> can't get them up. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yes. Yeah, and, and sometimes we have that, don't we? The music that comes through from uh, generations above us. Oh, well, that's a good one too. Yes. Uh, Jesus Christ was born. <laughs> um, so many nice comments there. Um, wonderful. Uh, well. I'm I'm always got music on and so my competition is based around let's get rid of those uh, is based around a song so we saw it with cabin boy knits it's a word scramble it's an anagram and as I said uh, to you it's not a comment one fizz wonderful fizz ah oh, need to tell you about fizz producer fizz you can see i didn't read my script we've got our schedule here <laughs> producer fizz let's hear it from producer fizz who's in the comments guiding you through dropping links whenever to keep you going um <clears throat> she's there is going to give you a form she's going to give you an email form the same with all the other boys you'll you'll get their form and if you want to enter you go to this little google form I'm not collecting emails. I'm not going to put you on a, a, on a mailing list. We don't do things like that in my shop. Um, but that's the way to the enter because oh, it's, it's worth a fair bit. All the dudes are giving away patterns of some sort, electronic copies of something or electronic amount, maybe $15, $20 or whatnot. Here's what we're giving away. <gasps> you could win 25 pounds electronic gift voucher. So no matter where you are, you can spend that 25 pounds at my shop. So you could buy yarn if you're a yarny person or you could buy fabric. And that's from me to you for not only being here, but well, it is for being here, for taking that time out of your busy schedule to sit and watch to vest into me and in all the other dudes as well because it means a lot um it certainly means a lot to me and my shop um i don't know whether i've told many of you but um it's getting difficult retail is getting difficult we all buy yarn from different places don't we we all buy fabric from di different places bills are going up i've just signed a new contract for uh, the electricity and it's it's a nightmare so from my point of view as a business person i'm sort of going down the youtube world because if youtube can pay ad revenue that can then pay my bt bill or my uh, my rent or well that's a bit that's a bit a lot <laughs> paying rent but if it can pay a quarter of the telephone bill or the internet bill that would be great 
So I really appreciate you watching and then obviously putting up with the ads where they are um, and taking your time out. So to give you a prize of 25 quid, uh, it means a lot. And obviously you can spend more because you're buying it on, uh, on in my shop. So if you wanted to spend 40 quid and have 25 quid free, brilliant. All right. <laughs> I'll stop running on about that now. Um, so this is the anagram. If I get my right buttons, here we go. So don't tell anyone. Don't write, don't write it in the comments. I'll put it up there. Don't give it away. That's the anagram of the song. Think it, if you know it. Fizz has dropped it in there. What song is it? We were talking about all the Bublés, all the Johnny Mathis. Is it a classic? Is it a pop? What song is it? If you know it, Go to the link that Fizz has dropped into the competition and then you can type it in, type your answer in and you could win a prize. <gasps> 25 quid could be coming your way. Um, right, so if I do that and if I take that off, uh, which is that, if you can't remember it, don't worry because with the wonders of technology, if this works, it should be there there for the rest of the show. So don't worry, you can be fathoming them out. Try not to cheat. Don't go to an anagram hunter. <laughs> oh, I know what some of you are thinking. Right, um, we're, we're, we're crafters here. Let's do a bit of crafting. And I've got on the crafting board some crochet and some fabric. Here we go. It all ties in with uh, what we started talking about earlier, tree decorations. I'm a big fan of crochet. I don't do it enough, partly because it um, involves a lot of counting. <laughs> so I tend to do very small garments. I, um, uh, I know uh, many of you on here are, are big crocheters. Uh, uh, Gary, I've often chatted to Gary on uh, Urban Yarn. Um, he's done some fantastic things and some uh, many of you makers. Um, and you do wonderful things. I did try a garment. Uh, I don't know whether any of you have seen recently, um, the first of its kind really, um, Murit, a high-end crochet pattern book. It's kind of being like pom-pom or lane. Uh, and boy, we need it, we absolutely need it. Because getting modern, getting to know modern crochet designers, for me as a shop, a retail, it's very hard. Yes, you've got the brands like King Cole and Sirdar. They kick out crochet patterns, but they tend to be granny squares. Now, nothing wrong with granny squares, love them. But sometimes you do want to do different things and bigger garments. And you don't necessarily just want to do a granny square waistcoat. So trying to find the designers is difficult. Yes, you can go through Ravelry, but not everyone is is you know, good on the internet, especially my gen, uh, my older generation, they don't do things always on the internet. So Murit was a lovely, lovely thing to, to, to see. And I did try one of theirs. I think it was Stephanie. Oh, I can't remember. Someone, some of you will say Stephanie, someone uh, who did a, a lovely top down crochet piece. But I soon found out that my, my crochet is probably a bit too loose because my double crochets or your single crochets were too gappy, so I gave up. But I love doing little items. Not amigurumi though. So this is a crochet snowflake. Fizz will put the pattern in the, the comments there. And it's using a yarn that I sell. <laughs> um, where is it? Here we go. It's a bit like uh, Shape Yes. Um, you know, uh, those little balls of cotton you get, except I've gone with Katia. An interesting thing that you might want to know, the reason why I've gone with Katia, sadly, here in the UK, we voted, many people voted, well, close, voted to leave um, the U uh, uh, to Europe, uh, Brexit, basically. And from me, as a shop point of view, most of our yarns are bought from Spain. Uh, Italy, uh, Denmark, uh, uh, Spain. So I knew it was going to be a problem when we left. They said that shipping was going to be nice and easy, but we all knew it wasn't. So shipping is a nightmare. It's 
stick, stays at customs now. There's no free trade, free posting where it would just take three days to come from Spain like it used to. It's stuck at customs and I have to pay customs charge. I have to pay brokerage as well. So it's difficult for me to buy beautiful European products. So I've had to stop doing that. And the only way around it is to choose British companies or to choose companies from Europe or elsewhere in the world that have their European distribution center in the UK. Well, Katia is one of those. They decided they want the UK market. So they've set up a warehouse. They deliver all their stuff to their warehouse and I can still order from Katia. So brilliant, thanks to them. Otherwise, we're down to, you know, only a few that I can get as a little shop. Remember, I got, you know, paying those brokerage fees and those big UPS fees, difficult. So this is cotton, United Cotton, and it's a lovely uh, crochet snowflake. Now, I've starched this so you can see how firm that is. Now, just imagine that hung from your tree or as a garland. It's wonderful. But look at these ones. I'm going to show you now. Uh, let's go to that. Look at that. Oh, how beautiful are they? Let's go back to this one. So this one is by uh, a free pattern. Again, Fizz will drop it into the comments. Uh, this one is called the Sun Star by Renata Saj. I don't know if I've said that right, apologies. But look at that. And if I put that the, wrong, the right way round, uh, it's just beautiful. It really captures the essence of a snowflake and that idea of um, fragments. I wanna start singing, let it go, let it go. <laughs> um, and that idea of an old fashioned, can you remember those wonderful uh, kaleidoscopes we used to look through, uh, wonderful. But what it was about this that just sung to me, I saw this uh, from another dude podcaster. He's not part of this, but um, uh, uh, Zach, Zach Stout, Crochet Zach Stout. I saw him talk about this on one of his uh, podcasts and fell in love with it. And it taught me all about the front and back post. Uh, so I'm going to have a quick chance to have a look at the chat let us know in the chat if you know what a back or front post is or if you've never heard of it because it is the posts that make this and make crochet boom on another level look at this one this one is the flower star and it really does have that essence of flower in it and let me just try and show you the posts so the posts are there and we've got posts let's put it on there 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 and there and what i want to do is to try and quickly demo it for you if i can find it oh it's on the floor <laughs> there we go um oh look at that look yes Someone loves Zach Stout. Yes, thanks, Fibre Hustle. Um, many of you know it, I can see. Uh, you're chatting about that. One post is in the front. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> As in the front yard or the... <laughs> um, so let, let's explain. Let's go to this. Right. Uh, and that, is that my phone? Ooh, is that, let's get that there. There we go. So... Here. I'm a lefty with crochet. You're probably all going to go, oh no, can't understand that. But in crochet, a treble, certainly for treble, uh, a double treble or a triple treble, you, the longer the, the crochet stitch, the more you can see the post. That's the post. Nice, open it up. That's the post. That's the post. That's the post. Now, you tend to, with crochet, you used to, you're used to going under the Vs, aren't you? Under the V, 
under the V, under the V. But with front post and back post, you actually want to do this. So front post there. That's all front post is. So you're not going under the V, you're going, so you're not doing that. You're not going under the V, you're actually going there and round the post. And what it does, and you can see it here, it actually makes it like a rib effect in knitting. You get this relief, this, this pushing up and backwards. So here, can you see the V? They're the V's there, but they've been pushed forward because we've got these back posts here. So you get this wonderful relief work from this border being behind the post. And if you're a designer, you can have fun with what you're going to do because will it, it will push the fabric up or back. So let me do a quick demo. Front post is the crochet hook in front. So there's the demo. There's the post front. That's the front post. So if I'm doing a treble, I'm going to yarn over, go through, pull up a loop, Go through two, go through two, done. So again, another front post, go yarn over because I'm doing a treble or a double that you would call it. There's the front post, not under the V, pull up a loop, go through two, as normal, go through two. Now, if you're doing a back post, the back post is slightly harder because you've got to come the hook has to come in from the back of the work. So let's do a quick one. So you're going to get yarn over, but you're not going to go from the front. You're going to, you're going to turn it to the back and go around the back post like that. So you can see where the hook is. It's at the back of the work and it's then very hard to pull up the loop. So I sometimes push it down, push it down, and then pull up the loop there. And then you can go through two, and then you can go through two. And look what it does to the work straight away. Front post, front post, back post. Can you see how it's pushed that there? And that, audience, is how you get that. And it is beautiful. If you've never done it, don't be put off by it. We're all here because of the wonders of YouTube. Let's go to here. You know what YouTube is like. You've got some phenomenal resources out there. You've got people like us that you can join with. You can find your tribe, as Tracy and Stitches uh, uh, love to say, find your tribe. You can find your tribe here on, on YouTube. You can find fellow knitters. You can find fellow uh, crocheters, fabric people, sewers, patchworkers. But you can also find tutorials. Now, as we know, you can also find good tutorials and not so good. But they are, that's the fun of it, hunting around. But have a look, have a look and see if you can have a go at doing it. If you download the pattern, it's a free pattern, let us know. You can hashtag the wool patch. You can find me on Instagram and you can show us your pictures. Um, uh, this is part of YouTube, uh, Tube, I can, <laughs> I can never say it. This is part of Tube, Dube, Tube Dudes Live. Uh, Christmas holiday edition. I also do the Woolpatch show as a vlog. Now, this is my second live. Um, I've got Chip to thank uh, with all this technology that I've gotten into. Um, if you've watched Chip from Fibre Hustle do his quilt stream show that he did uh, at the beginning of the year, uh, it was him that inspired me. So Chip, thank you very much because the live connection for my vlog to my audience, I just love. So I don't know whether I'll go back to doing a recorded vlog, but if you want to go back, uh, you can see all sorts of makes that we've done. But we have this wonderful thing called the gallery. If you, in the UK, uh, of a certain age, <laughs> you will know a wonderful TV programme for kids uh, 
was one of the first art TV programs for kids. You know, not like um, Art Attack that we've seen now, the modern ones. Back then, it was a wonderful man called Tony Hart in the early 80s. And he would teach you to draw. Huge, huge, massive influence on me being a drama and art teacher. And you would watch some of his stuff and it'd be phenomenal. But there was always this section called the gallery. And it had this lovely xylophone music in the background. And you would see people's work and you would marvel at it, thinking, wow, how, how have they done that? So I've taken that idea and I've put it into my show. So if you make one of those, hashtag us on, on, on Instagram or email me because we'd like to have your finished pictures in our gallery. And it's grown bigger and bigger, and everyone loves the gallery, because what we do now, with the wonders of Fizz, she types it all up, and we put out what all the patterns are, and who it's done by. Um, I've, I've seen uh, Jimbo, he's on here, he's done loads of things, and, and when he posts, and Julie, and, and uh, all loads of you, who give you post your knits and then you say what it is to inspire others. You've got to remember the teacher in me. Um, I'm, I was always taught, you know, you praise the kids. But when we become adults, we're not very good at tooting our own trumpets, are we? Well, I'm changing that. We do toot them and that's what the gallery is. So send in your finished objects. Not only can we then appreciate the wonderful hand-knitted work, the couturier in us all of sewers, fabric people, knitters, crocheters, but we can then inspire others. Because you never know, you might be watching the gallery and go, oh, that's a nice knit. I, I, I wanna I wanna have a go at that. Um, and 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 be inspired. So please look out for another show and look out for the gallery. Now talking about knits, we we've we've <laughs> they're there, they're there at the back. We're finishing off, only got a few minutes left. But let me show you the, the nativity, bless them. I, I'm, gonna get, I'm gonna get off and I'm gonna go and grab some. Who do you wanna see? A king? Go and put it in the chat. <laughs> do you wanna see Mary? Do you wanna see a shepherd? <laughs> I've got to get used to uh, the stream length. There's about 30 second delay. So I've got to now fill till I see something in the chat. Maybe it'd be a good time to have a, a, a look at my script. Have I gone off schedule, Fizz? <laughs> no, I think we're all there. I think we're all there. Um, so I'm gonna get this and get this, that there. Let's move that. Come on, what do you wanna see? Oh, and I'll get up. Mary, someone said Mary. <laughs> good. First, it's like a, it's a bid. Someone wants to see Mary. <laughs> Mary, Mary. You all want to see Mary. <laughs> I love it. Mary, Mary. Oh, and there's, a, there's one, one, one for a king. All of them. Right, you know what? Let's just, uh, yeah, let's go for it. Uh, let's do that. Let's do that. Right, hang on. I've got to unplug. Oh, and on that note, can I just say also, do you like the wall hanging? Special prize, you can guess who made that for the wall patch. Genius work from, yes, you've guessed it, PF, producer Fizz. How cool is that? Barbara, it's our logo. Bah. Right, right. Let's go to the camera. Shall we go to the camera? Look. They're the kings. How fabulous are they? Hands up in the chat room if you know of a person called Jean Greenhow. I'd be interesting to see whether it's a UK thing or whether it's a worldwide thing. Jean Greenhow, say, say, I know, I know, I know. In the chat, I know, I know, do you know? <laughs> I know, does anyone know Jean Greenhow? Kings? Shh. 
Shepherds. Aren't they fabulous? Look. Look at their coats and their hands. <laughs> Joseph, he's looking a bit. <laughs> Baby. Oh, I don't need my crochet hook, do I? Bah. <laughs> oh, do you know what? I could have another swig. Oh, look, 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 people know Jean Greenhow. Look, they're coming through. Yes, I know. Um, I know. James, great. Have you knitted anything of um, James, of her stuff? I know. Jackie Knits, wonderful. Um, don't know. Right, Diane. Fizz is going to put some links down below to go to her website. She started knitting early I think 60s 70s and then started developing patterns when there weren't any and then started to develop her own way of doing them uh she sadly passed away not so long ago but she you know a dream you know a Jean Greenhow when you see it um there's Mary everyone <laughs> Mary look at the detail on that oh there's sheep uh, look and it's, it's all sewn in. It is quite stunning. She's got loads of free patterns and the nativity is not a free pattern, but you can order it. Um, I don't have the pattern, but a wonderful little quaint British yarn shop does have them for sale. Fizz, I think you've put them put them down. But you can get anything. You can get uh, Kingsman, Guardsman. You can get Postman Pat kind of characters. You can get fairies. You can get um, firemen. <laughs> you can get... She does every day. It's just phenomenal. And she explains how to do it. And what I find interesting as well, she was one of the early ones. You know when in Knitting World, when we used to make a stitch, classic make a stitch, most people did in in well i think probably 50s 60s 70s uh was just the knit front and back loop it's only i think in the recent years that we've started to come on with developing how we do our yarns and how we do our increases if you watch rocks knits rocks and knits on youtube phenomenal what knowledge she has but this idea of make one um, knitting, uh, increasing knitting in the front and the back of the loop, um, or even picking the, the, uh, the increasing that way. Uh, we now do it, make one by picking up the bar in between. And she was a pioneer of the make one of picking up the bar and then how you place it on your left needle is how you increase. So wonderful, wonderful. And, and you see her work everywhere. Well, blimey. Oh, before we finish, let me just quickly show. Look at this as well. Fabric people, don't want to leave you out. Uh, for those who want to do a no-sew project, look at this. That's a polystyrene cone underneath. And it's a lovely no-sew project. Quick one. I love doing these. You could do it with baubles too. Uh, but this one goes on our table, Christmas table. Uh, I've got to finish it with a star. And it's done with the good old fashioned two and a half inch square. Get a jelly roll, get a lovely Christmas jelly roll um, and two and a half inch, cut them up into squares, fold, fold. There you go. And there's your triangle. And then it's just a case of pinning it in. No so pin, pin, and then do another one, 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 and you get to the top. And you get that. Fizz will put a link into the lovely Jennifer of Shabby Fabrics. Do you know them? Great fabric people, uh, great YouTube. I uh, love Jennifer and she has great tutorials. It's quite an old one though. Now I think that must be about six or seven years old, but, but take a look anyway, take a look. Right, oh, a new 45 minutes was gonna be a quickie. <laughs> Zipped past. What have we got coming up? Oh, are you ready? 
Shall we take a look? I like doing this. On the microphone. Shall we take a look? <laughs> Here we go. If I get my buttons right, right. We have got, coming up after me now, we have got... Yes. <laughs> the boys, Kevin and Ray, needles at the ready. Uh, let's move that away and up there. And if you're still after watching them, you remember 45 minutes, you get your 15 minute break to quickly go to the loo or go and get a top up. Oh, speaking of which, top up. Mm. Sherry or, oh, does anyone like... Huh? I think it's the Italian in me. <laughs> this is the Ronno. Lovely. Uh, and yes, who else? Let's have a quick look at the line up there. So you've got Needles already. Then you've got Peace for Peace Crafting. Michael, I'm on moderating. So I'll be dropping links in for him. I'll see you there. And then, of course, we finish with Fibre Hustle. Wow. 45 minutes. Oh, let's get my earpiece there <laughs> going wrong. Uh, thanks, everyone. It's just been lovely to share this with you, this idea of Christmas, kickstarting your Christmas um, and having all us dudes here coming together, talking about what we love, whether it's knitting, whether it's crafting, whether it's sewing, whether it's patchwork, but more importantly, coming together as a community and sharing ideas. And I can see so many lovely comments in, in the chat. I'm going to love watching this back later on and seeing what you've you've written on there. Remember the competition. Uh, I think we'll drop it in the, the comments below when it finishes, but Fizz has dropped the link in there. So enter it. You could win a prize. <gasps> Remember, 25 quid could be yours. Woo! As a little way of saying thank you very much. Thank you for supporting us. Thank you for watching. Other than that, it just leaves me to say, I might see you in two weeks if you tune into the wall patch. But big up for, for Kevin and Ray, who's next for the continuation of Tube Dudes Live 2022 Holly Edition. It's been a pleasure, everyone. Thank you for spending the time with me. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.